Morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for, uh, on behalf of Spark, thank you for welcoming me down today to tell you our story about change and about disruption. Uh, but first of all, congratulations to the award winners last night. Um, being in sales, I know how important it is to oil the wheels of commerce, and I understand you guys did that pretty well last night. So I also understand it's a bit of an early start for you guys, so um, no better way to start than by easing into it, and we'll play a little bit of a video. So before I talk about our journey, I'll start and we'll go out, uh, we'll start with the future in mind. Yeah, we're gonna see you. We're gonna see you. 
So when we show this video to the younger generation of today, they call it commoditizing laziness. And I think they've pretty much got a point, right? Yeah. We call it a spark. We call it unleashing the potential of New Zealanders through amazing technology. We want to do that in people's businesses as well as in their personal lives. But it hasn't always been that way. About 29 years ago, telecom was set up when it separated from NZ Post. And this is what we did. We solely provided a fixed line telephone for your home or your business. A lot has changed since then. We launched the first mobile network, a TDMA network, then a CDMA network, then a 3G wideband CDMA network, and then recently a 4G LTE network and a 4.5G network. We launched broadband with dial-up, an ADSL, VSL, fibre, wireless broadband. We established Geni, which is now Spark Digital. We bought Rivera, we bought CCL, we bought AppServe, we established Skinny. We built Moorport, we built Lightbox, we partnered with Spotify. We're a completely different organisation to what we were when we were telecom. So we were changed, we were perceived as very arrogant, and we probably were to a certain degree. We had a monopoly. We were slow, we were cumbersome, we were internally orientated. And then structural separation happened with, between Spark and Chorus, and for four years we became incredibly internally orientated, ripping these two behemoths apart and having complete structural separation. Off the back of that, we decided we're losing a lot of money. We're going, walking backwards from the cliff slowly, so that means we're, we're taking our eye off the ball, we're uncompetitive, we don't know what our competitors are doing, and we're losing market share, trying to protect legacy revenue streams. So we changed, we became, became acting like a retailer, a daily cadence. Traditionally what we would do is we would look at the financials every month, and then that would only be an early indicator. Well, let's wait till the next month and see if that's a trend or not. Then you sort of eight to 10 weeks from when that, uh, that event happened. So we changed our orientation. We now look at daily sales. What happened yesterday's and yesterday's numbers? Sales, service, the competition, anything the market's doing. And we're evolving and we're adapting at an incredibly fast rate. We started to disrupt. So we started to, as we got competitive, we started to focus. We're actually we're getting competitive on price. That's not a sustainable game. It's not really delivering what our customers want. And I'm talking to the right audience when it's about creating sustainable competitive advantage. Traditionally, we would build everything. Now, we partner first. So we partner, buy, build, depending on the product, depending on its life cycle, depending on the industry, depending on what commercial model is that we're trying to achieve. If you look at Rivera, as far as buying an organisation, we bought that three years ago, and we've, uh, we've put about five times the revenue into that business since then. You know, Moorpork, a smart home, smart office, uh, security, home security, all enabled by mobile technology with apps, etc. Completely starting smart home category within New Zealand. And Lightbox, hitting New Zealand markets before, uh, before Netflix legally hit the, uh, hit the market. But again, changing the game, <coughs> disrupting those industries around them, trying to target adjacent revenue pools and margin pools that we can naturally vertically integrate through, um, through our digital and our connected technology. And how's that, form, how's that move for us? Well, we're now actually number one in mobile revenue, right? Spark is the first fixed line incumbent telco in the world to ever regain number one in mobile, right? And depending on who you talk to, Simon Mutra, Russell Stanners, and any given day, the network's better on one or the other, or mobile's better on the other. But we know our mobile revenue, and we'll come out today in our annual report, is higher than Vodafone's, and we are the first, first country company in the world to knock Vodafone off number one. And we're very, very proud of that. We've got a lot to work on, absolutely. But we're celebrating some of those small wins. Three years ago, before we bought Rivera, we had very, very small share in cloud. Now we have two thirds of the market, right? So our ability to understand our customer and know what our customer wants and know how our customer needs to operate for their customers is really, really critical for us because that customer intimacy is what differentiates us from the global players like an Amazon or a Microsoft Azure that can come on over the top uh, and, and take our revenue streams and own that relationship with our customers. We believe our advantage is our, our proximity to the market, our passion for unleashing the potential of New Zealand businesses uh, and, and connecting the New Zealand market much greater, much quicker and closer to the global market than ever before. And we start to show up differently for our customers too. If you look at the old days, we were very much yell and sell get this product at this price, very, very um, rational type of marketing. Now we're starting to turn up very, very differently.
Buddhist. Transparency. 
right? One of the biggest challenges we have as an organisation, and we've probably all had it, right? Who, we all know nobody wants to call a call centre. It's the worst thing you could possibly ever have to do. Me as a customer across any industry, any company, I hate having to call a call centre. But we know at times our customers have to do that. So we offer a transparent approach. You can go onto our website and you can on, um, contact us or support and it'll tell you the fastest way in which you can get to us. Now it's pretty open. Right? At times you can be three hours on a, on a queue. But if you look at how it's changed, right? New Zealand is the fastest growing fibre economy in the OECD. The fastest uptake. Little old New Zealand only has a finite supply of technicians. Right? So when you've got the fastest growth of fibre, what you do is your copper technicians are the first ones to get upgraded to fibre technicians. So 12 months ago, when we called Chorus or one of the LFCs, the customer came in, so we don't own the copper network, right? We don't own the fibre network. That's what Chorus and the local fibre companies own. 12 months ago, the customer complained because of the weather and they had an issue with their landline or their, uh, or their broadband. We would quickly go through to, to Chorus or one of the LFCs, be patched through, and get a response back to the customer and with an update pretty seamlessly within a couple of minutes. At the moment, it's an hour. So our inbound reps waiting on a call from you guys and your friends and family are taking a call from the customer. We're then outbound calling the LFCs and chorus and it's taking up to an hour for a process and response. Most customers are about uh, six minutes on the phone, so that's ten customers that can't wait. It's 10 customers that then go online, go and try another channel, go on the store, go on our business hubs, get pissed off, go on Facebook, call the media, because it's not happening. So without a doubt, it, uh, structural separation with Chorus and Telecom and the rest of the market has provided competitiveness to the economy and competitiveness, competitiveness for customers with better prices. Has it delivered a better experience for the customer? No, you would say it hasn't. And we're working now with Chorus and the LFCs to significantly improve the systems integration so we can deliver far better experiences. But our customers also love calling us. We've got about two and a half million customers. And they just like to pick up the phone for some reason. We haven't made it easy enough for our customers to migrate into digital channels. Right? On app, online, on device, they can do so many of the journeys that they just demand to ring up and call us on. So we'll, make, we'll be making significant changes in the way that we turn up. Omnichannel is a word that you're probably all familiar with. Every single one of you will have a different interpretation of what omnichannel is. At Spark, what we define omnichannel is, is a customer can start, rejoin and complete any interaction through any channel seamlessly with the history going with them. Right? So if you're with your mates on social and you're talking about you know, digital services or you're talking about telecommunications, you go onto our website, you start to look through what that might look like. Uh, then you go, okay, sort of narrow down to a plan. I'm going to call a call centre and just you know, complete my transaction and get some more insight. They can instantly know that where you're up to in your journey, narrow it down so you don't have to relay, reload any of that history. You might come down to a $59 mobile plan and not sure between the Galaxy S7 and the iPhone, so you want to go into the store. So then you book an appointment in store online, uh, and then you come in to the store to touch and play and feel the device. Again, through our CRM system, all of that information will flow. So we already know you've, you've chosen the 59 plan. You're down to the uh, you're down to um, the iPhone with the Galaxy S7, and then we can close that sale and let the dairy in there. So that means merging our service and our sales organisation together. So on the left hand side, we have customers that want technology to enable their lives and enable their, their, and their, their business and their personal lives. We also have customers that like technology but just want a simpler, uh, more easy uh, life and that would be through what we would call a skinny life with our skinny brand. We have multiple brands, Big Pipe, uh, Skinny, Spark that can address different customer segments at any one point in time. We have a customer intelligence um, and experience engine on the right hand side. So when a customer walks through a geofence, which means basically we put a geofence up around our stores, when the customer walks through that, it, it offers up into a tablet from the sales staff a dashboard on that customer. On their last five interactions with Spark through any channel, 
business hub, online, mobile, social, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, it'll tell them what their current usage and service outage is relevant to that customer. It'll tell us what players they're on. And it'll also tell us, based on their usage and their engagement with us, what's the most likely next best product for them or solution for them. Right? It'll also tell us um, It'll also tell us what they really desire from us and what we think they're actually going after. This is a learning tool. Right? So at the moment, you guys, I don't mean to offend anybody, uh, but there is a very well-known travel company with an app. Every time I go into a lounge in New Zealand, I ask them if I want coffee. I don't drink coffee. I'm one of those weirdos, right? But I get a beer every single time. It doesn't offer me grant to want to style like a classic. It's going to be at the reception waiting for you. No, it doesn't, right? There's another bank that I use. Um, and I'm one of these weird guys that still gets cash. I don't like to know how much money I don't have in my bank, so I don't get a receipt, I don't get a printout, um, or I don't want to display. But every single time, I, it's never, the 300 bucks that I get out is never on the front screen. I have to go to the second screen, punch in 300 bucks, and I also have to say, no, I do not want to display my balance or print. That's an example, or those are examples that aren't learning about my preferences and how I behave. What we're building and what we're close to launching is exactly that. It will continue to evolve and adapt and offer and serve you up relevant content, content based on your interactions with us through any single touch point. All right? So we're going to change the game of customer experiences. What this will unlock is our ability to offer proactive assurance. Right? So at the moment, what we're doing is we trialled it two weeks ago in Christchurch. There was an outage with the Copper Network uh, at 8.30 in the morning. By 10.30, we thought, okay, this is not going to self-correct itself. We don't control that network, remember? Um, so what we did is we sent a SMS out to the affected customers in the suburb. And we said, right, we see that there's an issue with your landline and your broadband. Would you click on this button, and you, or reply on this button on the SMS, and um, we will automatically redirect your landline to your mobile phone. And if you also then want us to apply 20 gigs of mobile data to your to your uh, mobile free of charge uh, until your broadband's up and running, then that's good to go. 62% of customers responded to that and said, yep, all good, let's go. Right? That's 62% of customers that would have ordinarily probably rung us and gone, holy shit, guys, this is a really crappy experience. What's going on? Right? So changing the game away from reactive assurance, uh, um, reactive, reactive problem solving, to proactive. Right? Also, we have a product called Wireless Broadband. It uses our LTE network. It's between four and ten times faster than a copper <coughs> network, so ADSL or VDSL. We get about 22,000 copper faults a month. We get about 600 mobile faults a month. Right? So the network's better. It delivers far greater speeds. The NPS is significantly better uh, than what that is. So again, a copper fault, we can instantly patch you through Tether your uh, fixed data across to your mobile, and would you like us to send you out a wireless broadband modem so that you never have this problem with the copper network ever again? Upgrade New Zealand is a massive focus for us. Give customers the best possible connection available at their house. And I think you've got uh, reading up uh, this afternoon uh, on demand, so virtual assist, right? So using avatar based technology, how can we provide a digital environment where our customers can contact us and get pointed in the right direction first, the most efficient way to solve their problems. And the evolution of that is deeper integration to our CRM. So that's contextually relevant to that exact customer through avatar-based technology. That will then allow us to provide a community-based care model. So we've got a device evangelist page on Facebook, which is about internal staff. We look at Geek Zone, we look at Gift Gags, and we want to provide an environment where te techy people can solve other customers' issues for us and earn social currency and spark credit from doing so. Right? And then that leads us to as a premium offer. So we will remove the friction, what we call car wash. Right? So everything we do, all the friction in our experiences and our processes, we put through the car wash to spin into a new, a new experience which will be digital enabled. It'll be on app, it'll be online, and you don't need to, um, don't need to, to go through any other channels. Right? As part of that, we will also wrap around uh, the product assurance and the service model, a la sort of what New Zealand have done. We take a lot of um, leverage off the expertise that Air New Zealand have done, showcasing an in-app, omnichannel experience, 
right through your life cycle. Notifications, prompts, weather, uh, parking, taxis, etc., etc. Fantastic example of an app delivering great omnichannel ecosystem benefits. And then the premium element of the year means that pay for service, either a uh, service as a differentiator for our customers, for our high value customers, or a pay for service, because the more efficient model that customer can do it, self serving. So, what you see is you see a real change, the share of interactions on the left hand side, that's up the other way at the moment. And what will happen is the types of interactions our people will be doing will be far more contextually relevant, far more empowering for the customer, and far more rewarding all around. How will this show up for our leadership? So leadership is really, really crucial for this. So we've completely changed. We had about 8,400 employees about three years ago. We're about 5,200 now. And we don't consider ourselves 5,200 people. We consider ourselves 500 high-performing teams of 10 people. We work very agile, but we fail fast, we learn very quickly, we're very fluid, solely focused about providing fantastic end-to-end -end customer experiences digitally enabled as much as possible. Right? This is really changing, completely changing how our leaders turn up. Every single one of our people deserves a great leader. We've invested significant money in leadership programs over the last two or three years and will continue to do so. We want to make Spark the most exciting place to work in New Zealand. And we're really, really passionate about the game plan and our strategy around really, really empowering our customers, putting them in the centre of everything we do and delivering the experiences our teams really want us to deliver. So leadership is a massive focus point for us. So, wrapping through a few points today, hopefully you got some value out of the video at least. Um, but what is there to remember? Don't wait to be disruptive, I know the tourism industry is fantastic at, at innovation and really uh, changing the game as far as what's going on. I love seeing what you guys have got going on with the virtual reality uh, session today. Um, but where that's our, our bag is continuing to look at how we disrupt or be disrupted. I've heard it all before, but it couldn't be any truer in our organisation. There are 86 RSTs in New Zealand, so retail, the retail service provider or internet service provider, 86. Between us and Vodafone, we've got about 84% of the market. Right? So that means 84 is probably about 16% of the market. Right, so it's a very, very highly contested environment for us to be in. Uh, know yourself better than anyone else. So, you know, our passion is really to learn about our customers. So every single solution, experience, service, product that we launch is, is, is customer tested from the start. Right? So we don't build it and then go, okay, what do you think? Tweak, tweak. Now we go, this is what the concept is, what do you think? Right? Well, what is the problem we're trying to solve for? What's the issue? What's the opportunity? Invite customers into that environment and you learn all the way through. Be customer driven, not product driven. So we're solely focused on our customers. We believe if we earn the right from serving our customers well and delivering them great experiences, they'll become advocates for us and we earn the right to expand our, uh, our product or our services set with them. Uh, transparency is the key to trust and transparency is warts and all. Right? There it is, all out there. It will take you, I hate to say it, two and a half hours today if you want a voice call. If you want to get on a chat, it'll take you 24 minutes. Right? Or there are, are there other options. And we are absolutely focused on bringing those numbers down to an acceptable level. And we're working really closely with our partners. We've put more than 400 new agents into the call centres over the last 12 months. Now we get it, that's 400 ambulances at the bottom of the cliff, right? something earlier in the chain has happened for them to call in the first place. Because you guys don't want to call. We get that. And that's why we've invested $220 million circa in the last three years in re-engineering our systems, re-engineering our processes, building our out our app and our online experiences, building these car washes, removing friction from the experiences so that we can unlock truly game-changing experiences for our customers. And last one, fostering leadership and new ways of working is absolutely vital. Data, digital, user experience, user design are absolutely vital ingredients for any organisation. They are very, very hard to find uh, and we're evolving very quickly. So what we tell our people, and this is quite a confronting thing to say, is we will provide you employment for the next six years. 
we will not provide you the same role for the next six years. And the younger generation, they get that. They want to be fluid. They want to be trying, changing, and constantly evolving their careers and how they turn up. But for the uh, more mature people within, within our organisation, that's quite a confronting uh, statistic. But that's how rapidly the marketplace is changing. You know, there's a, there is an adage that says if you don't show emotion in your role, you'll probably be automated, right? Which is a pretty scary thing to think of. But you know, when you go back to our schools, our schools are still doing science, maths, handwriting, spelling, English, humanities, the same old things. Where's the coding? Where's the development? Yeah, they introduce apps. Yeah, they use iPads and, and MacBooks and Windows. But that's just as word processors in Excel. Right? With the coding and the user experience and the real game-changing elements that's going to put New Zealand on the map, that's going to ensure that our, few, our kids have a really vibrant future in this market uh, and that we can connect New Zealand as close to the global marketplace and connect the global marketplace closer to New Zealand. Thank you very much, everybody.